And here it is, the Dodge Viper. What do you think? If this doesn't excite you, then check your pulse because you aren't feeling too damn well this morning. Hey everybody, we've got one of the coolest videos of the year today because we've got with us here a 1995 Dodge RT10 Viper. How cool is that? And it's taking on not only a Corvette of its generation, the C4, but a slightly newer Corvette as well to see just how mighty that V10 is. In case, what are we doing today? To see how these three cars stack up, we are going to do our typical quarter mile drag race as well as a 30 mile per hour rolling race. And then at the end of this video, we're going to tell you the very interesting backstory behind this particular Viper. Case, this is a bucket list experience for me because thanks to our friend Brandon, I am behind the wheel of a 1995 Dodge Viper RT10, the first generation of the Dodge Viper with a V10 engine and 400 horsepower. This is the Corvette Killer Case. <laughs> Yeah, and it's even of the same era as the Corvette, but the thing about it is that that would be competing with a later version of the C4 Corvette. Of course, I have an earlier model with the L98 V8, 245 horsepower, 340 pound-feet of torque. So not that powerful by modern standards, but, um, but against most of the old school cars we drag raced it against, my car's done pretty well. Sure has, Case, and the other thing too is that um this car is, uh, is quite valuable. We've got to be very careful with it. We're going to give it a good run, um, but I'm very honored to be behind the wheel of this car. Now, over 460 pound-feet of torque, it seems to be the number I've been reading online on these 95 Vipers. Um, what an experience. I mean, you sit low so far back in this chassis. It's like, it really is like the Cobra, which is kind of the design influence of this car. Um, now, of course, in the perfect world, we'd have a C4 ZR1, and all the comments are going to be like, give us a C4 ZR1. Maybe we can convince our friend Jordan to come out here, race Brendan in his C4 ZR1. But in the meantime, we got a quarter mile in front of us up here in Colorado, over 5,000 feet above sea level. And um, let's see what happens. You want to have uh, Brendan count us down, my friend? Let's see how it goes. Folks, today's video is brought to you by salvagereseller.com. This website allows you to bid live on online salvage auto auctions without a dealer's license. You can register for free or use the 20% off coupon in the description below. Go find your salvage car gem now. Hey, how'd you do? I did uh, not my best. But a 1584 at 91, my launch could have been a bit better but I just think that that Viper has more top end. Although I was surprised at how much I was staying with you actually. I ran a 1498 at 101.5 and for all the comments saying that should be an 11 second car, look, we're at over a mile above sea level. Take a couple seconds off of that just for the elevation and then a couple more seconds off and then I don't want to crunch this gearbox because it's not my car. But look, this isn't about times, this is about fun. And clearly the Viper RT10 is more fun than the C4 Corvette case. Whoa, Tommy, that's a bold statement. I think my car is pretty fun, but now we have to see how these two cars compare in a rolling race. It's crazy how different these two cars are, though, even though they're only a few years apart. Um, I mean, this Viper is a purpose-built, focused sports car with no concessions for comfort. 
I'm surprised they even have air conditioning in this thing. Um, and uh, I mean, I don't. The roof, Brendan said, the owner said it would take about 45 minutes to put the roof on this car. Um, whereas the the bike, the Corvette's a car you could drive every day pretty comfortably. I don't even have a windows case. Yeah, that is a pretty extreme vehicle there too. I mean, just the size and the stature of that V10. All right, so let's do this. We're gonna accelerate up to 30 miles an hour. Do you want to count us down this time? Can do. I'm at 30. In three, two, one, go. Second gear in the pipe, that's where the power is. Oh my God. I let myself fall behind a little bit as I was counting down, but it doesn't really matter because that Viper just has more under the hood. Did you? I mean, Versa 5.7, I feel like you should be pulling further ahead. I'm pretty impressed with my Corvette keeping up as much as it does. Yeah, yeah. Well, you still lost, so let's bring on Brendan in the mighty C5 Corvette and see if that turns the tables. Brandon, so you brought along a C5 Corvette. Tell me about that. Next generation. Yeah, so this is a 1995 Corvette. You've already taken out the C4, but I think the C5 is going to provide a little more of a challenge for you since this has 345 horsepower, about what, 100 more horsepower than uh, Case's Corvette? Yeah, that's right. And um, now it's an automatic, which hurts its performance definitely, right? And it's not a Z06 or anything, but I'm just curious. Does the next generation Corvette, how does it compare against the legendary Viper? Let me uh, let me roll up my windows and make sure my air conditioning is turned off here, Tommy, before we get started. Do, do you have that problem? I have air conditioning. How about them Apple presents? <laughs> a 15.7 at 97 miles an hour so uh, not a bad time in this Corvette compared to what we've run in the past but certainly not fast enough to take on that Viper. I just ran a 14.9 at just over 100 once again so I was very consistent to my last time but um, this car is such an impressive uh, impressive machine it's uh, at sea level with a really good driver behind the wheel this thing would be a beast. Yeah it, uh, that is a one fast ride. Alright Brendan, so for the roll race, second gear I'm going to go into 30 miles an hour on the 3, 2, 1, go. How do you feel about that? Yeah, I think I feel pretty good. I know I'm going to leave this just in drive because I don't want to try and chance it and being in the wrong gear, but let's give it a shot. Oh, man, it took forever to get down. Oh. Oh, no, we're I lost her for a second. And that is where 
he took me right there. Oh no, I'm coming back! I'm coming back! best run in the Viper and all the comments are gonna probably flame me on that one but um, look uh, this is a quicker car than the base C5 we proved it in the drag race um, uh, but uh, yeah what a, what a machine I'm, I'm just blown away with it uh, let's do this let's go back talk to Brendan and get some more information about what it's like to own a Viper you're gonna talk to me <laughs> <laughs> So Brendan, man, what a pleasure. Tommy, good to see you. Thank you for letting me run your Viper down the airstrip here. I mean, it is such a special experience. Now, what drew you to the Gen 1 Viper? How'd you end up with this car? Uh, on accident, actually. So uh, at, the, uh, at the time, this was right in the onset of COVID, uh, early 2020, I had a friend who was listing another car that I wanted to purchase, and uh, I needed to create some money. And at the time, I had a well-restored DeLorean um, that another member of our local DeLorean club was eyeing. And uh, he made me an offer of his DeLorean and some cash and this car for my DeLorean. Wow. Um, so I wound up taking this car and the other DeLorean on. I sold the other DeLorean fairly quickly, got the car that I was after, um, and had every intention of just selling this car along. Um, you know, it. I'd, I'd never... I always liked them, right? Everyone our age kind of likes them, but sure. I'd never really just wanted one of these to have. Um, but I went for a drive with my wife and she liked it. Like it really connected with my wife. I'm like, huh, that's unusual. <laughs> Usually Julie hates my cars. So uh, wound up keeping it for a little while and then never really looked back at, uh, at selling it. So uh, yeah. When you bought this car, what was the mileage on it? Uh, when I bought this car, the mileage was about 19,800, if I remember right. And where are you at now? Uh, 24,500. So talk to me about Gen 1 Viper ownership experience, because these cars have a reputation of being pretty hard to live with. What has your experience been? Um, you know, it depends on if you're used to living with an impractical car or not. <laughs> um, this is, it's, I could definitely see where this might not be what you want as your first interesting car. Um, you know, the trunk, there's not a ton of trunk space. And if you bring your uh, folding roof to pay with you, there's no trunk space. Mm. Um, the hood's about three miles long. It's very wide. Uh, it's got a lot of torque and it's got a reputation for wanting to kill you. <laughs> um, for me, it really hasn't lived up to that particular trope. So, you know, I found that if you drive it like a car, it acts like a car. Uh, one of the first things I did was I replaced the tires. The old tires were... I think at least one of them was old enough to drink with me, but um, replace the tires. Uh, and it's been great ever since. I've never felt out of control with it. Um, you know, I take it on spirited drives. Um, also drive it daily from time to time when, uh, when needs must, you know. You said the tires are pretty pricey though. The tires are pretty pricey. If I recall correctly, it was somewhere between seven eight hundred dollars a side. Wow, and that's because I assume it's just it's such an odd size, a three thirty five with tire, thirty five R seventeen. Right. I mean it's, that's an enormous tire. It's a bizarre tire, bizarrely wide, a lot of sidewall for it too. Um, but yeah, you really, really Michelin and one other is the only brand that's out there who's making these at this point. Um, but yeah, replace the tires. Um, and other than that, it's been pretty darn reliable for me. Um, so one of the crazy things about Vipers, um, and I've never actually interacted with the Gen 1 up, up close, but they don't have exterior door handles, only the inside. And there's, there's really no way to lock from the outside. Is that correct? Uh, no, there is no way to lock it from the outside. Wow. Um, now it does come with a locking key fob, but that's just to deal with the immobilizer. Okay. Um, and it also triggers the alarm if the alarm were to be optioned or working, yeah. for example. Um, <laughs> yep. 
but yeah, uh, living with it, you know, there's a lot of little gotchas. Uh, people will, people on the internet will talk about the side pipes. Uh, the side pipes will burn you real good. Yeah. Have um, you been burned? I have. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you, you put it into your mind when you first get it and I'm going to remember this. I'm never going to have a problem with this. And then, you know, you get out of the car while you have your mind on something else. You start smelling some sizzling. Oh man. It's your leg. <laughs> um, but you know, luckily there's some plastic shielding over it, so it doesn't get you too too bad. But it it, it will actually burn you. Uh, I mean, are parts gettable? Parts are parts are interesting, and sometimes you have to do a little bit of uh, parts bin searching. I, I remember when I initially got this, it had bad front control arm bushings, um, which were available, but very very pricey from Dodge for an actual 1995 Viper. Um, but luckily, you know, one of my uh, Good friend mechanics was able to identify that it crosses over to a 1999 Dodge Durango RT. Unreal. So God bless the parts bin. Unreal. Um, the other thing I'm noticing too, like Case, if you want to show the inside, uh, uh, looks like a lot of the climate control would be pretty similar to other Dodge products. Very similar. I, I actually recognize the climate control panel from my parents' minivan when I was growing up. Uh, <laughs> very, I think it's the same panel actually just put behind us around. That's so funny. So, um, have you had to do a lot of, to it over the years? Like, what, what, what have you had to do maintenance items? What is broken? What are kind of like some things people need to know? Yeah, so really, really not that much. Uh, after, after the initial wave of getting the car back up and running and in good shape, um, really all I've had to do is give it oil and insurance. Um, wow. I'm trying to think if there's been anything. Now, the, the car's a little bit cursed itself. This, this particular car has had a hard life, and it started with a hard life, and it Sad to say, it hasn't gotten any easier with me. But <laughs> what, what do you mean? Give me some cursed examples. Uh, let's do the walk around. Okay, yeah, let's do it. Come on, Tommy. <laughs> so uh, we'll start here at the driver's door where uh, I hyperextended the door one day, uh, did something where I wasn't paying attention, and caught the uh, caught the door on the garage door or the uh, the edge of my garage, and I have modified it now to where it opens up. Maybe a little bit wider than factory. If Chauffeur just keep ready. Keep going and keep going and keep going. <laughs> um, so that's on my list to fix. Um, up front, the uh, the car's got a little bit of a dent in the front lip where it. Uh, when we set it down off the lift one day, we had it chalked, but when we pulled the chocks, it started rolling. We didn't catch it in time, and it uh, it went face first into a Pepsi machine. Oops. Yeah. It's the Pepsi generation. <laughs> um, see, the, the quality and fitment of the hood is not the best. If you look here, you can see that, and this happens to all of them, but there's, there's a good amount of cracking through the hood here. Um, over time, that's something that kind of develops on driven cars, from what I'm told by other people. Um, but that's not really the curse. The, the curse comes back into play over here. Uh, where we've got some missing fiberglass and missing paint from a 1995 Toyota Tercel driving on the freeway in front of me and losing a headlight. Oh, man. Uh, the headlight bounced around on the freeway a little bit and then bounced into the side of the car while I was passing it. Um, so with all of these things into consideration, Brendan, um, I know you had bought it originally. Like, sounds like you were maybe going to sell it. Are you going to hold on to it? What, what's the long-term plan with the Viper? I think I have to hold on to this. This car is so endearing in a lot of different ways. I mean, you just drove it and you got to feel how the torque is, Crazy. how how the how the engine runs. Like it is a great running car. It's just a little bit ugly. <laughs> I mean, on the plus side, you can go get groceries in it. It can get rained in. It really doesn't matter. You don't have to think about that with this. Yeah, um, that's true. So, I mean, for for me, I think this is kind of a project in stasis is what I'd call it. I have not in every intention of doing some things to make it a lot nicer in the future, but I plan to just drive it and enjoy it the way it is now. So let's talk, and I don't know how close you follow the market. You can tell me if I'm wrong, but let's talk about market for a little bit. So Case's C4 was about 10 grand. Okay. C5 was about 14. What's the Gen 1 Viper market doing right now? I actually have no idea. I don't follow the market. Well, you have to let us know in the comment section. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty funny. Um, you know, I've, I've seen them. I've seen them do everything from... 28s to low 40s when I see them yeah. in different places from marketplace to bring a trailer. Um, I'm told by other people they go up, but I haven't seen it close enough to be able to say that's factual or not. Right. It's, it's not something I pay attention to. 
Well, Brendan, I can't thank you enough for coming down in the rain with your Viper, letting me uh, drive it. It's been a ton of fun. Um, and I also want to give a shout out to your fantastic organization. Well, thank you. Yeah. It's Shift Colorado Magazine. We're a uh, local Colorado enthusiast driven magazine, uh, digital once a quarter. Uh, so we don't, uh, we don't go out too often. Uh, car reviews, show reports, Colorado car builds. We cover a little bit of everything. So check us out. You can find us at uh, www.shiftcoloradomagazine.com. And you can find us at alltfl.com. But guys, thanks for watching. Bucket list day for sure. Man, you killed it. Thank you, buddy. Thank you.